Well, I was uh, I was a patient uh, at the cancer clinic, and I believe someone there told me that there was this new clinic uh, started up, being started up, and uh, uh, I was close to being through at the Tom Baker, and so my family they said you just need to be referred. So I believe my family doctor referred me, and I'm sure. When you're at the Tom Baker, I mean, they have so many different types of patients that they're treating for different types of cancer. You get that little red card, and you are C dash 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 dash, and that's who you are. You're not Linda Day or whoever. And, you know, they're treating the disease. They're, they can't deal with your emotional functions or your worries or... And yes, I did, you know, my husband and I went to the psychosocial department as soon as I was diagnosed. But it didn't really answer or help me deal with the concerns I had. And so when I came to Breast Cancer Supportive Care, I mean, right away they were able to help me cope and manage my anxieties of how is this going to affect my life and how my life has changed. How will I help my family deal with me having breast cancer? The impact it has on my life has changed me totally. I mean, this may sound really weird, but if I had to get breast cancer to be where I am today, I'm okay with it. Because I am so much stronger emotionally and physically or having been through this journey. Um, I have met some of the most amazing people who have enlightened me and taught me so much about life uh, that I would never have been on this journey if I hadn't had breast cancer. And that may sound really weird, but it's something that I will cherish for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, my, I have two sons, and uh, they were fearful and didn't like talking about it because they were scared. And, um, you know, they knew I was, you know, I come from a medical background, and mom is a very strong person, and she'll be fine, and, you know, and so unfortunately, I think I put on a, a bit of a facade for them showed that I was stronger than I really was. So, and my husband, you know, bless him, he would stood behind me for every step of the way, but did, does not to this day like talking. Well, I have to breast cancer supportive care because, you know, I have been able to talk and share things that I haven't been able to talk about to anybody else. And they opened their arms, their hearts, their minds, and their souls mm -hmm. and gave me peace of mind that how I could cope with, you know, feeling not like a woman anymore and my worries, my anxieties, will I reoccur? And they all treated me with such kindness and helped me and taught me how to move on to the next day and move forward. The program that I uh, participated in, I don't think they called it a recovery yeah. group with those back then, because I've now 10 and a half or I'm coming 11 years, but uh, it was doctor, there was one of, the, uh, one of the doctors, Dr. Thompson, there was a psychologist, uh, share, I don't remember her name. There was about seven of us, six or seven of us, and it was about an eight-week program, and we talked a lot about recovery, or reoccurrence, and the anxiety, how reoccurring, and so probably similar to their recovery groups that they have now, but maybe, you know, this was probably one of the first that they did, so, but it did help. They had us work on, you know, our own personal emotional little tasks that we could do that would help us uh, deal with our anxieties. And um, 
so that we could focus more on the positive side than being more, you know, too negative about, you know, what if, and, you know, a lot of what ifs in our lives will may never occur. And so to let a what if drag you down. And uh, so by having this reinforcement and these people to help you, direct you, that you won't reoccur. And if you did reoccur, there is such great medical care out there uh, that we could, you know, treat you. And you have to think in the positive side of it. So the, half, the cup half full instead of the cat, cup half empty. So I don't think there's one word that you could ever use to describe breast cancer supportive care. I mean, they saved my life. I mean, maybe not in the physical sense of from me dying or something, but they, they're saviors. They saved me. And I'm here today because of them. And I mean, I, I just, I will do anything for them. I'd walk to the end of the earth for them. So I want this, I want this organization to be modeled across Canada. I mean, every woman and man who've ever had breast cancer or affiliated with it, have somebody like this that could care for them. Would be an amazing feat. You know, I'd love to see this go across Canada or in the United States, because this is such a unique program. And I mean, you just the personal care that you're given. Is, you know, it's and you know, a friend of mine who I've been working with at the uh, golf tournament, his wife was just diagnosed about two months ago. And I right away told them about breast cancer. And I, this woman looked up a lot of information. She said, breast cancer supportive care looks like it's for people who are really, have had gone through a rough time. And I went, no. Breast cancer supportive care is for anybody who's been diagnosed. And you're going to get such personalized, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, because everybody has such individual situations that arise through the, when you're diagnosed. And so, you know, she's, well, I only had a lumpectomy. I said, it doesn't matter if you had a lumpectomy or a mastectomy or a tram flap surgery or whatever. You know, they are able to give you direction for whatever circumstance you're in. And so that would be something that I would want to get across to you. It doesn't matter where you are in your diagnosis or how small or big you think it is, breast cancer supportive care would be there for you and would be able to 